What's up guys? Yes, for today's video we're going to talk about skepticism, and in particular, skeptical veganism. Each year, veganism grows in and around the world in both numbers and influence. In fact, a report by the research company Global Data found that roughly 6% of Americans identify as vegan, which is a 600% increase since the year of 2014. And part of this growth is exemplified with the rise of prominent vegan animal rights content creators on YouTube and other platforms. This also spawns an increase in bad arguments both for and against veganism. Fortunately, there are a few vegan content creators out there making excellent content going beyond dogma and pseudoscience to spread our message and convince the open-minded. This will be the topic of a future video. Let me know down below if you would like me to make a video on this topic. If we want to be taken seriously as people of reason and have a chance at persuading intellectuals and academics, then we need to apply more of a skeptical, scientific approach toward our advocacy. Now this leads us into scientific skepticism. Scientific skepticism is the application of the scientific method, reason, and critical thinking to validate empirical claims while remaining neutral on non-empirical claims. Now, in layman's terms, it's a methodology used to question assumptions and beliefs on the basis of science. A skeptical vegan is a person who uses skepticism throughout his daily life to come to objective and accurate conclusions regarding veganism. We hold that claims for and against veganism must be based on reasoned arguments and evidence to be validated. For example, let's evaluate the claim that meat in general causes cancer and that eating processed meat is equivalent to smoking cigarettes. First, research does show a strong link between processed meat consumption and risk of colorectal cancer. The World Health Organization's review, which was based on a meta-analysis of seven studies, confirmed that processed meat is a group 1 carcinogen. These are meats that are salted, smoked, deep frozen, or cooked at high temperatures, just chemically altered in general. However, red meat is listed as group 2 a probable carcinogen, so there's still a bit of conflicting information about the carcinogenicity of red meat. Additionally, there is no evidence linking fresh white meats like turkey, chicken, or fish to any types of cancer. And on the claim that eating meat is equivalent to smoking cigarettes, this is quite hyperbolic. If an agent is listed as a class 1 carcinogen, it just means that there is sufficient evidence to deem that that agent causes cancer. Two different agents within the same group can increase your risk of cancer at different rates. The experts concluded that eating a 50 gram portion of processed meat increases the risk of colorectal cancer by 18%, which looks quite worrisome until you realize that this is just relative risk. Those who eat processed meat are 1.18 times more likely to develop colorectal cancer than those who do not eat processed meat. In other words, if you're eating meat daily, there is very minimal increase of lifetime risk in developing colorectal cancer. It can go from something like 5% to 6%, which is a far cry from what a lot of vegans are claiming upheld the risk of developing colorectal cancer. By contrast, those who smoke cigarettes are 20 times more likely to develop lung cancer than those who do not smoke. The increase in cancer risk due to smoking is about 2,000%. So no, not all meat is shown to be carcinogenic, just processed meats and possibly red meats, and eating a hot dog is not equivalent to smoking cigarettes. Now when skeptics refute bullshit pro-vegan arguments like this, we may come across as anti-vegan, but again, we're just strong advocates of using sound reason and evidence to support our claims. Using logically incoherent arguments and appealing to pseudoscience only obfuscates the truth and undermines the rational case for veganism. Claiming that plant-based diets are natural, that humans are frugivores, or that flies are equal to humans only pushes people away from veganism and also legitimizes the stereotype that all vegans are irrational dogmatists. And yes, it's especially frustrating when people resort to pseudoscience and dogmatic ethical arguments for veganism, especially when there are so many reasons, like actual rational reasons to go vegan. In fact, be sure to watch this video of mine here, my Veganuary video, to hear just four reasons why you should go vegan. And because it's natural is not one of them. Okay, so far we've discussed what skepticism is, but I'd like to clarify what it is not, and what can occasionally masquerade as skepticism, open-minded skepticism, is really just closed-minded ignorance. Skepticism is not a denial of the facts. Skeptics meticulously evaluate each claim, consider the evidence, and follow the facts to where they lead. Now, if someone continues to deny a claim that is backed by science and logic, then they're not a skeptic, they're just a denialist or a conspiracy theorist. Skeptics will easily change their position or admit error based on new evidence and reason. Denialists, on the other hand, will just reject the evidence and harden their position. I've also talked briefly on denialism in my other video, be sure to check that out, in How to Change Carnists' Minds with Science. Climate deniers continue to reject the reality of climate change, despite mountains of data comprised from over 30 years of testing, research, and peer review, and is the consensus of climate scientists. These people are not skeptics, they are deniers. They just don't want to accept any evidence 
that goes against their preconceived notions. You see the difference? Skepticism promotes scientific inquiry, whereas denialism promotes closed-mindedness. Appeal to nature is a fallacy of reason asserting that, because something is natural, that it is automatically valid, justified, or ideal. For example, many carnists deploy this fallacy of reasoning to justify eating meat, while causing the unnecessary suffering and death to billions of animals. Now, this is fallacious because, one, it assumes that diets are prescriptive when they are in fact descriptive, and two, it's a confusion between taxonomy and dietary characteristics. Unfortunately, many vegans counter this with more junk science and faulty reasoning claiming that humans are herbivores and frugivores and that plant-based eating is the natural diet. Again, this is full of faulty assumptions that dietary characteristics are indicative of biological taxonomy and that natural is good just because. Now, in reality, humans are defined as generalized feeders with neither carnivorous nor herbivore specializations for acquiring or processing food and are capable of consuming both animal and plant protein. The whole debate about whether or not humans are carnivores or herbivores is futile because humans are generalized feeders. Also, just because something is natural, it does not make it valid or justified. Many vegans also propagate ridiculous conspiracies about the motives of the meat and dairy industries. Some vegans even dismiss any and all industry-funded studies as automatically invalid, regardless of study methodology and peer-reviewed status. This strange mistrust of non-vegan scientists and studies is ridiculous and dishonest, and also perhaps culty. Now, in reality, the validity of a study depends on a lot of different factors. Factors such as study methodology, a representative sample size, and the ability to test for and rule out confounding variables. No, studies should not automatically be rendered invalid because they are industry-funded. Should we apply a larger dose of skepticism to them? Perhaps, but we shouldn't dismiss them as invalid just because they are industry-funded. If we actually care about how this movement is perceived by non-vegans, and if we want to open this up to as many people as possible, then we should stop fabricating conspiracies about the motives of the meat and dairy industries. In the end, it's science and logic that matter, not your personal bias. Anyway, that's uh, all for now. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will have another video up very soon. Peace.